Crackberry.com. Hey everybody, Kevin from Crackberry.com here with the new BlackBerry Z10, which is more than just a new BlackBerry. This is really the first phone from Research in Motion running the BlackBerry 10 operating system. It's all new from the Flow experience to the BlackBerry Hub experience to the new keyboard. Let's just get into it right now. The BlackBerry 10 experience is really all about using your finger and using gestures to manipulate the operating system every which way you can. And it starts actually turning on the device. So when you want to turn on your BlackBerry 10 phone, you just drag your finger from the bottom and swipe it up. You don't even have to press a button or anything else. Um, taking a look at the lock screen, there's some useful data on it too. You see your notifications on the left. You can see up can upcoming calendar events. We've got our, you know, I've got drinks in a few hours here. And there's a shortcut to jump into the camera if you need to. But we won't do that right now. Uh, once you come up to the home screen, you're going to come back to wherever you left it off. So if you leave it off on the application grid here, that's where you'll be. Or if you leave it off in the middle of the nap, that's where you'll come back to. Uh, taking a look at the home screen, you know, it's immediately recognizable. Uh, even though it's a brand new operating system, you know, visually there's a, little, a lot of continuity between uh, BlackBerry, you know, software of the past and this. So, you know, iconography, etc., is all very, uh, very much the same, very similar. If you're an existing BlackBerry user, you're going to recognize it right away. And if you're a new user, it looks pretty good. Um, looking through the icon grid, you have your different panes of icons as you'd expect. You know, if you want to create folders, you can do that easily. So if I want to put maybe my Twitter and Facebook into the same folder, I just tap and fold and I can do it like that, but I'll cancel out for now. Uh, but then comes the exciting part. So you open an application. I'm opening up BBM. To get back to the home screen, it's all about the gesture. There isn't a button to tap, you just swipe. You swipe straight up and you go back. And what you come to is what's called Active Frame Panel. So you can have up to eight open running apps, and that's what these are. These aren't widgets, these aren't live tiles, these are active frames. And it's literally the application running, but minimized. But what you'll see is that a lot of apps, when minimized, give you a different uh, optimized view. So in this, this case, case, when, when I, go I go into the contacts, contacts I was actually on Adam here. Uh, I can see all his contact info, and when I minimize it, it's going to change to his avatar. Or if I'm in something like uh, the calendar here, I can see my next upcoming event. Or if I open an app like, let's say, the weather, if I can find that, and I go to the home screen, I go to the active frames, you're going to see it optimize into a view there that, that is a useful, um, you know, gives me useful data. So when you look at the home screen, you have your active frames, they're open apps, they display in the order of the most recent, you can have up to eight active frames open. So right now I have four apps open. No, nope, I actually have eight. So as I scroll down, I have eight applications open. And if I open a ninth app, you're going to see the music app here um, go away on you. Actually, I already had that one open. Let's open Twitter. Now you're going to see it go away. And now Pictures is there. Uh, so the next part of the home screen experience here is the hub. So if you really think about this operating system, it's kind of like there's a long rectangle around the device. And at the far left is the hub. And the hub is all your communication in one spot. So things like my BBM are going to show up here, my text messages, my email accounts, even Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn are there. And third-party apps that developers tap into the hub, I can get notifications for them there. And it's basically everything in one uh, long view mixed together. So as I scroll down, you're going to see emails combined with missed calls, combined with BBMs, uh, combined with Facebook and Twitter messages, and you can customize the settings. So if you don't want something to show up like Facebook, it doesn't need to be in the hub. You can actually remove that. Uh, you can even remove things like the message counts, which I've done because I've got you know a lot of messages coming through all the time. And the hub is accessible from anywhere on the operating system. And this is one of the most compelling features to a person like me. Because if I'm in, let's say, the web browser and the red light starts blinking, somebody's messaged me, maybe I don't want to quit what I'm doing, maybe I do. But if you think about every other operating system today, you know, there might be a notification profile you can pull down. It might give you a pop-up. But you really have to quit what you're doing and go into those individual apps to, to address it. But with the hub, you start to swipe up 
as you swipe up and leave your finger on the screen, you get this preview of the messages that you, you have. So if I just got a text, I'm going to see a little text message icon. It's going to show me it's a text. And if I want to see who it's from, I can just start to swipe to the right and I'm going to see the hub right there. So if I want to take the message, I can go into the hub. And if I want to ignore it, I can just go back to where I was and ignore the message. So I have full control to choose what I want to do or see. And that's really, really powerful. It's basically like saying, you know, my, all my communications are sitting underneath whatever I'm doing on the phone. And they're always there, ready to go, they're loaded. I don't need to jump between eight different apps to check my text messages or BBMs or emails and everything else. It's one spot unified for all my communication. Super, super powerful part of the BlackBerry 10 operating system. Uh, looking at some more of the menus and gestures and things like that, when you are on the home screen, if you swipe down from the top, you're going to get your settings menu shortcut. So turning on things like Bluetooth or Wi-Fi are all there. If you want to silence your notifications, turn your alarm clock on and off. If you, go in, if you want to lock the rotation of the phone too between portrait or landscape, you can do that right there. Always accessible from the home screen. Um, when it comes to the flow experience within apps, a great app to look at for an example is, is BBM. And there's actually a lot going on here. So when you come into an application like BBM, you're going to see you know, a visual representation. You're going to see icons for the most commonly used things. So if I'm going to go between my BBM chats, which is where I'm at, or contacts, or groups, I can just tap those. If I want to see more of those major menu, menu, um, menu items, they're basically on the left. So when I swipe in here, you can see some redundancy. I've got chats and contacts and groups, but I also have invites and updates. And then for the overflow stuff, the things that you know, are important, but there's not necessarily a lot of room, they're in this little icon right here. So I tap that and I have more things. Start a multi-person chat, send a broadcast message. For items that are less commonly used, like settings for an app, you swipe down from the top. And you have to remember that. You always need to be thinking when you experience a new app for the first time, you know, swipe down from the top because there might be some stuff there hit the settings button, and now I have a lot of things, right? And these are, these are things you're probably going to set once or very infrequently, and they're there. Uh, when it comes to the lack of a back button on BB10, because you don't have a back button like you do on older Blackberries, you really don't need one because it's going to be there presented visually at the times when you want it, or in some cases, you're going to be able to just swipe back between what you're doing. The next menu, and I know, follow me here, there's a lot going on, is the action menu. So let's say I have a chat going on with uh, my buddy Tyler here. If I want to take action on it, you tap and hold, and then you can basically drag and do different things. So if I want to close that message, I'm just going to drag it to the bottom and, and end it. Uh, you know, in the inbox is a great place to look at that, where if I have you know, a spam, meal, spam email that just came through, I can tap on it, hold, and then I get all of my options here, whether I want to reply, forward, et cetera, et cetera, or all the way down, I can delete. Uh, by default, you're going to see um, you know, confirmation on those delete settings, but you can also turn them off. And that's an interesting part of this operating system, actually, is in the settings where you know, everything's been optimized for one-handed easy use, but for things where maybe you don't want to accidentally do something, um, you're actually going to be prompted to move a little more than you want to. So I'm going to turn on delete confirmation here just to illustrate this. And I'm going to go delete another email, drag it down, delete, and now it wants me to. But you see, even the location of that menu, it's a little out of reach of your, your thumb, just so you consciously have to say, yeah, you know what? I actually don't want to delete that, cancel. Uh, so really, a lot of little touches in the operating system that are optimized around this one-handed use from the bottom of the phone. Like in the web browser here, where normally you're used to seeing the URL bar at the top of the site, well, that's kind of hard. You always have to reach for it. In this case, it's at the bottom. So you can always get in there, start typing off of one thumb and one hand. Really powerful all the way through. And that altogether really starts to make up the, the flow UI of, of BlackBerry 10. So you have things like gestures to get around, you have the hub, you have a lot of menus, but they're all very swipey. For, for, to, to quote Adam Zeiss on the CrackBerry team, uh, and it makes a really compelling experience. So once you're up to speed with the gestures and layout of the operating system, it's really time to start putting it to use. 
there are a lot of great apps preloaded on the phone. And there's also a great keyboard that BlackBerry's put on it. Because I know a lot of BlackBerry users, you know, we're used to physical keyboards. This is a touchscreen keyboard, but it's actually really great. And we'll dive into the keyboard in another video. But I just want to highlight a couple of the features. So the big thing with it is they've optimized it for both one-handed and two-handed use. Uh, so whether you're, you know, if you have room for two thumbs, you can go heads down typing, that's fine. Or if you're walking in the grocery store with a screaming kid, you can type a lot out with one hand. And the word suggestion is really, really clever here and really unique. So if I type, you know, H-E, it's automatically looking at what the next word is I'm going to type. You know, it suggests here, hey, hello. And it puts it where I'm looking, right on the keyboard, you know, not off to the side or above or anything like that. And then I can swipe words up. So if I want to type hello, I don't actually have to finish typing it. I can just swipe it. And then other words are there. So, you know, how did it know I want to type hello from and then our and then website? Damn, it's like it read my mind because it gets smarter the more you use it. So the keyboard's great. It supports up to three languages at the same time. It tracks your accuracy. So if you have, you know, type kind of in inaccurate places, it learns over time and becomes more accurate. Uh, really great keyboard overall. And then looking through the device, you know, the web browser is great. It's fast, it renders pages well. It has flash support for those who want flash support. Uh, really impressive web browser. Uh, going through the device, you know, think, it's a smartphone. It's always thinking for you. It's always pulling in data wherever you can. So if I go to something like contact, which is normally where you just look up phone numbers. So here we're looking at Adam Zeiss. Beyond that, it's using, uh, it's intelligence here to pull in everything it knows about Adam. So if I go to updates, it's pulling out blog posts he's written on the web and things he follows. If I go to activity, it's showing us all of our recent correspondence that we've had. Uh, and it's always smart, you know, con it lo links contacts together too. So you can see I've had, you know, multiple occurrences of Adam through the phone and it's pulled them all together from Facebook, from LinkedIn, from uh, my straight mobile nations contact, merged everything together pulled in that data automatically. Uh, and it, that, that's kind of the way with BlackBerry 10. It really is just always doing work for you without you needing to do it. The app ecosystem on BlackBerry 10 is a lot uh, improved. So you're gonna see BlackBerry World full of apps and games to download. And beyond that, it's no longer called BlackBerry App World. It's BlackBerry World, which reflects the ability to actually go ahead and buy music and buy movies and rent movies throughout it. Uh, which can all be paid PayPal, there's carrier billing even. So if you just want to add them to your bill, you can do that. Uh, really completes the, the, the app ecosystem on BlackBerry. And that's something that's big. It's something that we haven't seen before. Uh, even when it comes to BlackBerry, a lot of people don't usually think games, but actually it's a great, great, great gaming platform. You can see here, we got Angry Birds Star Wars on, installed already. And there's just a lot of great features. There's, uh, you know, even in the camera, there's the time shift app for taking pictures and adjusting them and that kind of thing. So overall, there's a lot of apps that come on the device that are great. Uh, you're hearing me use the word great a lot because I'm excited with what's here. This is really the best of the BlackBerry experience. The old, they've caught up where they were behind and there's a lot of new features that push things ahead. Just like that hub, you gotta love it everything together. So if you're a power communicator, you value communication, you value saving seconds every time you pick up the phone to put minutes and hours back into your day. That's what BlackBerry 10 is all about and we're really excited for it. You know, and that's a good look at BlackBerry 10 and that's not all. So be sure to read through our full walkthrough. Keep it locked to CrackBerry because we'll be picking apart every single nuance of this new operating system. Hope you enjoyed the walkthrough.